The Supercars Invasion is continuing in NASCAR as Cam Waters is expected to drive for RFK Racing in 2024. Kaz Garland might be joining Ricker Racing in the 2024 season as Sheldon Creed calls out Richard Childress and Richard Childress Racing. What's going on guys, it's Daniel and welcome back to the video. We got some NASCAR and other motorsports stories discussed here today on the channel. Let's go ahead and just jump straight into those really, really quickly. Let's first go ahead and take a look at a couple paint schemes that have been revealed over the last couple days. The first paint scheme we're taking a look at is Chase Elliott's 2024 Hooters scheme. This is personally my favorite Hooters scheme that Chase Sully has ever ran. They do a really good job utilizing the sponsorship placement. The colors look absolutely incredible, and I think this is an absolutely amazing paint scheme in general. And I can't wait to see how on the racetrack and the three races that it's going to run in 2024. The next paint scheme we're taking a look at is Chase Sully's 2024 Universe scheme. This scheme looks really solid and really, really good in my opinion. Very similar to last year's scheme. I think it looks pretty good. I think it's going to run in five races in 2024. Not much to say other than that. Nonetheless, I think it looks pretty good in my honest opinion. The next two paint schemes we're taking a look at is William Byron's 2024 Exalta schemes and Raptor schemes. Look, I am not a fan of these paint schemes. On the Raptor scheme, I just don't understand why the front on it looks like a unibrow. I'm not a big fan of that. And when it comes to the Exalta scheme, it just looks plain in my opinion. And that black box is completely unnecessary. Obviously, one of the reasons why they're doing the certain things on these cars is because of the fact of trying to get through the OSS scan. I am not a fan of the Exalta and the Raptor schemes. They don't look good in my opinion. There's been some doozies during the soft season when it comes to paint schemes. And in my opinion... These paint schemes in general do not look very good, and I'm not a big fan of them overall, in my opinion. And now we're going to hedge on to the next story of today's episode as we're talking about NASCAR Authentics. As it was poured by Adam Stern, I believe yesterday, that die cast with Lionel and got placement at 3,931 Walmart stores, 1,843 Target stores, and 260 Mayer stores this year. That is up from previous years, if I'm not mistaken. This is absolutely huge considering the fact that NASCAR Authentics has been growing their brands with Lionel and other companies. This is absolutely huge to hear to see that more die casts are being sold and more companies. And I think in general, this is a massive and a huge win for NASCAR overall. And now we're going to hedge on to the next story of today's episode as we're talking about merchandise sales. As yesterday, the report came out for merchandise sales for 2023 when it comes to the top 15 placing in merchandise sales. In first, no surprise, you had NASCAR. In second place, you had Chase Elliott. No shock there. In third place, you had Kyle Larson. In fourth place, you had Kyle Busch. In fifth place, you had Kevin Harvick. Sixth, you had Martin Trix Jr. Seventh, you had Ross Chastain. Eighth, you had Ryan Blaney. Ninth, you had Joey Logano. Tenth, you had Dale Jr. Eleventh, you had William Byron. Twelfth was Dale Sr. Thirteenth was Denny Hamlin. Fourteenth was Hendrick Motorsports. And fifteenth was Alex Bowman. What's interesting is that Dale Sr. and Dale Jr. beat out people like Dale, Denny Hamlin and, of course, Alex Bowman. And, of course, you had Joey Logano, which kind of surprised me, beat out both Dale Jr. and Dale Sr. But it doesn't surprise me that the top three or four, Kyle Busch got a lot of merchandise sales this year, especially with a lot of branding. And, of course, him going over to Chevrolet. A lot of people are going to root for Kyle Busch. So a lot of that does not shock or surprise me, in my honest opinion. And now we're going to hedge on to the next story of today's episode as we're talking about Iowa and IndyCar. As it was announced yesterday that Iowa has revealed the first two artists for the IndyCar festival that Hyvee is going to put on. So Post Malone and Luke Combs are going to perform as two of the artists at the pre-race concert. I believe Post Malone is going to be performing on the, the, June, the 13th of June or July. And in, of, of course, you're going to have Luke Combs performing the next day on July 14th. This is absolutely really huge. Post Malone is one of the biggest artists. And of course, he's planning to release a country album in the not so distance future. And Luke Combs is one of the biggest country stars currently at the moment. Getting two big artists like that to perform your pre-race concert, especially for Hy-Vee, is absolutely huge. And I think this Hy-Vee concert is going to bring a lot of people out to the IndyCar event. I think this is huge and massively a huge deal for IndyCar overall, in my opinion. 
And now we're going to head on to the next story of today's episode as we're talking about Lucas Oil. As it was announced yesterday that Lucas Oil will continue sponsoring Kyle Busch in 2024 in the NASCAR Cup Series. Now the number race that Lucas Oil is going to sponsor Kyle Busch was not this close, but it sounds like there might be more races than they sponsored in 2023. They actually sponsored Kyle Busch at Auto Club and of course Kyle Busch got his first one at Auto Club and sponsored a couple other races throughout the 2023 season. But it's also confirmed that Lucas Oil is going to be working with Kyle Busch in grassroots events throughout 2024 as well, including in the Tulsa shootout, which was confirmed there. And I believe they're also going to be sponsoring Brexton Bush as well. It's really great to see another company continue work with Kyle Bush. The paint scheme was not revealed that Kyle Bush is going to run, but I'm very happy to hear that Lucas Oil is going to continue working with Kyle Bush once again in 2024 as a pretty big primary. Again, a lot of the other sponsors for Kyle Bush in 2024 have not been revealed at the moment, but I'm very happy to see that Lucas Oil is going to continue working with Kyle Bush in 2024. And now we're going to head on to the next story of today's episode as we're talking about Patrick Emmerling. As it was announced yesterday or Monday that Patrick Emmerling will run full time in the Wheel and Modified Tour in 2024. For those who don't know, Patrick Emmerling is a long term driver of the Wheel and Modified Tour and also he is one of the co owners of Emmerling Gase Motorsports in the NASCAR Xfinity Series and also in ARCA as well. Patrick Emmerling, I believe, has won some Wheel and Modified Tour races, so I believe that he has a really good chance and opportunity to potentially compete for the Wheel and Modified Tour Championship. I think, champion, I think it will be a major thing threat. I think he for sure will be a contender for the championship this upcoming season, and I think he's got a really good opportunity to get it done in 2024 when it comes to trying to win the championship. I think he will be a major threat and a contender for sure. And now we're going to hedge on to the next story of today's episode as we're talking about Sting Ray Robb. As it was announced on Friday that Stingray Rob will be joining AJ Foyt Racing in 2024, driving the number 41 car. This is the first of two or three drivers that have been confirmed for AJ Foyt Racing. The number 14 car has of currently at this moment not been announced. Stingray Rob, of course, drove the full season for Dale Coyne Racing in 2023 to very mixed results. A big reason why Stingray Rob is going over to AJ Foyt Racing in 2024, I believe, is because he brings sponsors sponsorship and funding. And for IndyCar to drive in the series, you got to have sponsorship and funding. So in general, I think Sam Ray Rob hopefully can have a better year. AJ Foyt Racing had a couple races where they shine, especially in the Indy 500. I think Sam Ray had a decent run in the Indy 500 last year in 2023. So hopefully with him coming over to the team in 2024, maybe he can get up there. Because like I said, AJ Foyt was very impressive in the Indy 500. But nonetheless, we'll see how Sam Ray Rob does in 2024. But of course, he's joining up with that organization in the 2024 season. And now we're going to hedge on to the next story of today's episode as we're talking about John Hunter Nemechek. Now, it was reported by Next Line Racing on Twitter that John Hunter Nemechek is expected to run select truck series races with Tricon Garage in 2024. We already know that John Hunter Nemechek, of course, is going to be driving full-time for Legacy Motor Club in the 2024 season with of the team in the number 42 car with Ben Bayshore as a crew chief. And also he's going to drive 10 NASCAR Xfinity Series races with Joe Gibbs Racing in the number 20 car, teaming up with Eric Amarola next season. Now, the number of races was not disclosed in the post, but I imagine probably around four to five races he'll run in the team. And my best guess is going to be in the number one truck because the five truck will be driven by Dean Thompson, Corey Himes back in the 11th, truck and Taylor Gray and Tanner Gray are both returning their respective rides in 2024. John Hunter, I believe, will be a contender in the races he runs in the truck series. Again, the number of races are not announced. I expect he'll probably run Daytona in the number one truck. There might be other drivers who get an opportunity, like a Tony Breidinger, perhaps, who could be his teammate next year. But nonetheless, we'll see. John Hunter Imachek, at least for sure, run some, some, some select truck series races with Tricon Garage in the 2024 season. And now we're going to hedge on to the next story of today's episode as we're talking about Stuart Haas Racing. As it was announced yesterday that their 2024 spotter lineup was officially revealed. And there's definitely some shockers for sure. So Josh Berry is going to be working with Eddie DeHaan 
in 2024. Noah Grayson, which was confirmed when it was announced on last Wednesday that Noah Grayson will work with Andy Houston in 2024 as Noah Grayson, of course, drives the number 10 car in 2024. Chase Briscoe is going to work with Joe Campbell, who I believe he worked with in 2023. And Ryan Priest will be working with veteran spotter and former driver Tony Raines. All these people have worked, or some of these people, of course, are former drivers in the respective right, and all have been veteran spotters in the past as well. The big one, obviously, though, is Eddie DeHaan working with Josh Berry. Eddie DeHaan also confirmed, I believe, today that he'll be working with Justin Allgaier in the Xfinity Series in 2024 once again. As for Eddie DeHaan working with Super Haas Racing, this is a big pickup, in my opinion, for Josh Berry, because Eddie DeHaan, of course, had been a veteran spotter working with Chase Sully when, of course, he won the 2020 NASCAR Cup Series Championship. And I thought maybe Eddie DeHaan was going to go over and work with Spire Motorsports to stay in the Chevy camp in 2024, considering there have been a report that come out, especially from Door Bumper Clear, that they've been buying up a lot of spotters. But I think this is a very, very good move for Eddie DeHaan to work with Josh Berry, who has experience working with. And in general, I think this is going to be a very strong move for Stuber Haas Racing going into the 2024 season. So I'm very happy to see that we will see Eddie DeHaan working with Josh Berry in 2024. And now we're going to hedge on to the next story of today's episode as we're talking about Blaine Perkins. As it was announced on Monday that Blaine Perkins will be joining RSS Racing full-time in 2024, driving the number 29 car. Blaine Perkins drove a majority of the season in the NASCAR Xfinity Series last year for our motorsports of very mixed results and kind of struggled throughout the 2023 season. As for Blaine Perkins' expectations, he's going a little bit more of an upgraded organization. RSS Racing, of course, is a team that is better than our motorsports, so of course we're getting a pretty solid driver. We'll be talking about here in just a little bit, that of course being Anthony Alfredo. I think Blaine Perkins is someone that could be a massive surprise in 2024 to have a couple good performances, but again, the Xfinity Series field is completely stacked so my expectations are pretty limited I don't think he's going to run absolutely amazing and incredible I think there could be some struggles coming away for Blaine Perkins throughout the 2024 season but I'm glad to see that Blaine has an opportunity to run once again in 2024 he also does bring some sponsorship in funding a big question had been going around with RSS Racing. Are they going to run four full-time cars or run three full-time cars? It sounds like, according to Joseph Strigley, they're going to have three full-time entries in 2024. And then, of course, they'll have one part-time entry for multiple different drivers throughout the season. And that will not be with Frankie Mina, as we'll talk about here later in this episode. Nonetheless, so a really great opportunity for Blaine Perkins. And glad to see that he'll be joining up with RSS Racing in 2024. And now we're going to hedge on to the next story of today's episode as we're talking about Colleg Racing as their 2024 crew chief lineup has been officially revealed. So Josh Williams is going to be working with Kevin Walter in 2024. AJ Allmendinger will be working with veteran crew chief Alex Yance, who I believe crew chief for the number 11 team in 2023. And Bruce Schlicker is going to be working with Shane Van Gisbergen in 2024. Two of these crew chiefs had already worked the call of racing last year in 2023. And bringing Calvin Walter in, who I believe is a veteran, has veteran experience as a crew chief, I think that's going to be a big, really good combination for all all three drivers. And having Bruce Schlicker, who's worked with AJ Allmendinger, who I'll be honest, I thought Schlicker was going to work with AJ in 2024, but I think Bruce Schlicker did want to work, of course, with SVG. And I think that this pairing is going to work together very well. And in general, I think Call of Racing has a really solid crew chief lineup for the 2024 season. Nonetheless, glad to see that their crew chiefs have been revealed for the 2024 season. And now we're going to hedge on to the next story of today's episode as we're talking about Junior Motorsports as their crew chief lineup has also been revealed for 2024. So no shocker and surprise, Sam Mayer once again work with Marty Lindley in the 2024 season. Justin Allgaier once again work with Jim Pullman in 2024. Sammy Smith will have a new crew chief in the 2024 season as someone who worked with Kyle Larson's team, that being Adam Wall as an engineer for Kyle Larson when he won 
won the 2021 championship. He will be the crew chief for Sammy Smith in 2024. And Philip Bell will be the crew chief for Brandon Jones in 2024. As, of course, Jason Burdett will be working with Jimmy Johnson starting in 2024. Let's talk about all four of these crew chiefs. No surprise that Marty Lindley and Sammy Sam May are going to be working together once again in 2024. Both of them combined to get four victories throughout 2023. And I think this pairing will have a really good chance to win the championship in 2024. Same thing for Justin Allgaier. Jim Pullman got four wins with Justin Allgaier last season. Justin Allgaier was a major threat and contender for the title. Could have won the championship at Phoenix. We know how good Justin Allgaier is at Phoenix. So not a surprise they're working together again. I mentioned Adam Wall. Adam Wall, like I mentioned, had been an engineer for Kyle Larson in the Cup Series. And, of course, Cliff Daniels gave a stamp of approval with Adam Wall working with Sammy Smith. This could be a very surprising pairing that works together very, very well. And I think that this is going to be a really strong pairing for 2024. And then finally, like I said, you have Brandon Jones working with Philip Bell. Like I've already mentioned, Jason Burdett's going to work with Legacy Motor Club in the 2024 season. I think Philip Bell, who actually was the engineer for Noah Grayson in 2022 when Grayson had his very dominant year, I think this could be a very surprisingly good pairing in 2024 as well. Nonetheless, glad to see all four of these drivers have their crew chiefs for 2024, and I think this could be a really solid pairing and not a bad move, in my opinion, to pair up some new crew chiefs, and it's going to be very interesting to see how Junior Motorsports propels themselves in the 2024 season. And now we're going to hedge on to the next story of today's episode as we're talking about Zane Smith. As it was reported by Next Line Racing that according to the owner of the team, Ty Norris, or one of the people that runs the organization, the original plan was to get Zane Smith to run full-time in the NASCAR Xfinity Series and part-time in the Cup Series. But conversations with Spire helped Zane run full-time in the Cup Series with Spire Motorsports. Obviously, we know that Zane Smith has a partnership with Trackhouse Racing for the 2024 season and will, of course, be driving with the Spire Motorsports organization as that number 71 car will be getting massive technical support and alliance with Colic Racing. Now, where could have Zane driven had, of course, this partnership started with him going there? My best guess, it would have been Colic Racing, probably that number 97 car that we're seeing Shane Van Gisbergen run currently at the moment. Zane Smith did have a couple of Xfinity Series starts in the past. Actually drove for Call of Racing, as a matter of fact, in his debut in substitution for Justin Haley back in 2021, I believe. And then also, of course, you did have him run the number 29 car at National. And actually got a top 5 or top 10 with that organization. I think Zane Smith, though, going to Spire Motorsports and getting help from Trackhouse Racing, I think this is generally going to be a massive and huge move. And I think this is going to be really fun to watch going into the 2024 season to see how Zane performs. Because I personally think that Zane Smith is going to be the best performer at Spire Motorsports in 2024, especially with that Trackhouse partnership. It's going to be fun to see what happens, though, and I'm glad to see that more of these details came out. It would have been very interesting to see Zane Smith, of course, run full-time with Call of Racing, probably, and then, of course, run part-time in the NASCAR Cup Series with Trackhouse Racing, probably in that Project 91 car, though, could have been with Call of Racing, who we'll be talking about here in just a little bit. But nonetheless, so I'm really glad to see that Zane Smith will have a ride for 2024 and be racing with the Spire Motorsports team in 2024. And now we're going to hedge on to the next story of today's episode as we're talking about Warner Brothers. As it was reported by Adam Stern earlier this evening that a new NASCAR media rights partner, Warner Brothers, is in early merger talks with CBS owner Paramount Global. And this also includes Paramount+. Plus. This is absolutely huge, though. The article that Adam Stern kind of reported on from Axios.com did not detail when the partnership would get done, but the fact they're in preliminary talks could absolutely be huge. Paramount and Paramount Plus, I believe a lot of people own. I'm not exactly sure the numbers of any people that do own Paramount Global and Paramount Plus, but in general, I think this is absolutely huge to see that we're seeing Warner Brothers continuing to grow their brand. And obviously, Warner Brothers is working to, is going to try to make NASCAR as big of a deal as possible and trying to grow the brand as possible when they take over their deal starting in 2025. And I believe they're going to be starting to work on partnerships and working on trying to promote the sport maybe as early as 2024 with like the House of Highlights. Because remember, Warner Brothers does own TNT. And I think the House of Highlights and the Bleacher Report are going to start promoting NASCAR here in the not-so-distance future. 
And now you have Paramount Plus coming into way, which had originally been owned by Viacom, if I'm not mistaken. But with the Warner Brothers coming into play, I think this could absolutely be huge and something to watch for as time goes on. Nonetheless, we'll keep an eye on the story and we we'll see how things kind of end up going through. But I think it's definitely a big story to keep your eyes out on as we find out more information when it comes to this story. And now we're going to head on to the next story of today's episode as we're talking about Joe Williams. As it was announced yesterday that Joe Williams will be the crew chief for Haley Deegan in 2024 in the NASCAR Xfinity Series. We already knew that Haley Deegan, of course, moving up to the NASCAR Xfinity Series in 2024 to be driving for AIM Racing in the number 15 car. For those who don't know who Joe Williams is, Joe Williams had been the crew chief for Brett Moffitt in the NASCAR Xfinity Series in 2023, which of course was at AM Racing. Joe Williams also was Haley Deegan's crew chief in her NASCAR Xfinity Series debut in 2022 when she drove the 07 car for SS Greenlight Racing. And also Joe Williams was the crew chief when Cole Custer won in the 07 car at Auto Club Speedway in 2022. Joe Williams is a very, very solid crew chief. So I think realistically, when you look at who the crew chief is for Haley Deegan in 2024, I think expectations are going to be relatively high. I think the goal for going into the 2024 season is to try to finish in the top 15 or top 20 in the standings. I think it's going to be harder this season because you look how strong the Xfinity field is for 2024. I think it is going to be tough for, for her to finish in the top 20 in the standings or even top 15 in the standings for that matter. But I think Haley Deegan is going to be up for the challenge, especially with the veteran crew chief like Joe Williams being up on the helm of the organization. I think Joe Williams will be a massive help to her throughout 2024. I don't think she's going to win a race by any stretch of imagination, but a couple top 10s is certainly possible. But the Xfinity field is completely stacked this year. And in general, I think she could be hurt a little bit by that. Nonetheless, so glad to see that she's got a good crew chief to work with in 2024. And I think that Joe Williams will be a massive help to her throughout the 2024 NASCAR Xfinity Series season. And now we're going to hedge on to the next story of today's episode as we're talking about Anthony Alfredo. As it was announced earlier today that Anthony Alfredo will be driving for Beer Motorsports in 2024 in the Daytona 500 and, of course, in the spring at Talladega race. Now, Beer Motorsports is planning to run four NASCAR Cup Series races in 2024. My guess is most likely both Daytona races and Talladega races. Now, Anthony Alfredo, I'm a, I don't remember his sponsorship was announced, but this will be the first time that Anthony Alfredo will be attempting to compete in the NASCAR Cup Series since 2021 when he drove the number 38 car for Front Row Motorsports. Remember, Anthony Alfredo also announced recently that he'll be driving for Our Motorsports full-time in 2024. This is a very solid opportunity for Anthony Alfredo and it, because Beer Motorsports is a very solid team when they run especially on super speedways. I remember a few years ago back in 2019 when Brendan Gaughan had a realistic chance to win multiple super speedway races of course, had that really famous flip at Talladega in 2019. And I think Anthony Fredo does have a really solid shot and opportunity to be an underdog to maybe contend for an outside shot to win the Daytona 500 in 2024. But of course, you do have to remember that Anthony Fredo does have to, in fact, qualify his way into the Daytona 500. And it's expected right now that there's going to be around seven or eight cars, most likely extra cars for the Daytona 500 in 2024. So this field is going to be extremely stacked. Another big question that comes up is what about Austin Hill? Because Austin Hill, the last two years, he's driven the number 62 car. My best guess is Austin Hill is likely going to drive a 33 car for Richard Schultz Racing because I think Austin Hill is going to make some select NASCAR Cup Series starts next year in 2024, even though he does have a couple years running the Xfinity Series in 2024 and 25 with RCR. I believe that we're going to see Austin Hill drive for RCR in the Cup Series. As for Anthony Alfredo, there's a really solid chance and a really great opportunity for him, and I think he'll 100% be able to make the best out of it in 2024. Nonetheless, really happy and glad to see that Anthony Alfredo will be joining up with Beard Motorsports. Fast Pass is back in the Cup Series for the first time in a few years, and I think he'll be able to make the best of this opportunity in the 2024 season. 
And now we're going to go ahead and jump on to the next story of today's episode as we're talking about Eric Amarola. Now, Eric Amarola spoke in an article, I think it was written by Motorsports.com, and I think it also spoke to Bob Pockers as well. And Eric Amarola spoke about the fact about why he was returning to Joe Gibbs Racing in 2024. In the article from Austin Konensky, he says he got a call from Joe Gibbs in September and offered him a ride. This is very, very interesting. We all know the story of what happened back in 2007 when Eric Omrol was actually a development driver for Joe Gibbs Racing, and he had an opportunity and a shot to, of course, drive there. He was actually in the race in Milwaukee, but unfortunately, due to the sponsor Rockwell Automation, they forced Eric Omrol to get out of the seat early, and Eric Omrol was not very happy, and very quickly, like a week or two after the situation, if I'm not mistaken, he left the team. Of course, it was announced recently that Eric Ahn will be returning to finish his career in NASCAR with Joe Gibbs Racing in the number 20 car and is going to split that ride with John Hunter Nemechek this season. As for Eric Amarillo's chances to be extremely competitive, one, I think it's really cool to see that he's getting the chance and opportunity to drive for Joe Gibbs Racing once again. I think Eric Amarillo, realistically, is going to be somewhat of a threat and contender for victories throughout the year. And I predict Eric Amarillo, at least in 2024, he's going to get probably around two to three wins next year. He's a pretty good super speedway racer, so he's going to be really strong on the super speedway tracks throughout the 2023 season. And I think, in general, he is going to be a major contender on all types of tracks, and maybe even outside shot of road courses as well, considering Joe Gibbs Racing's road course program has been solid in the NASCAR. Kirk's Finney series in the past, and remember, he did win the race at Sonoma earlier this year. So I think Eric Amrol is going to be someone to definitely watch out for throughout the 2024 season in the races he runs, and I'm excited to see him getting back behind the wheel of a car. Again, obviously, I think he's in a better position in his career right now, driving for Joe Gibbs Racing. They're a better team right now, and I think he's definitely going to be helping get that car a shot to make a run at the Owner's Points Championship in 2024. Nonetheless, very happy to see that we'll see Eric Amrol driving for JGR in the NASCAR Xfinity Series in 2024. I think he will 100% for sure make the best out of it and now we're going to hedge on to the next story of today's episode as we're talking about Shane Van Gisbergen as Ty Norris confirmed on Sirius M NASCAR radio that Shane Van Gisbergen is going to run the ARCA opener at Daytona to get approval to run the Xfinity Series opener at Daytona Obviously, Shane Van Gisbergen is going to run the full NASCAR Xfinity Series season with Call of Racing with a partnership from Trackhouse in the number 97 car. We obviously talk about his crew chief being Bruce Schlicker for 2024. Now, a lot of people on social media were extremely confused and frustrated that he has to run the NASCAR, well, the ARCA opener. But this is something that's been required for a very long time with ARCA to run any super speedway race in NASCAR, especially, especially since he's never really ran a super speedway race before and really has not had a lot of oval experience. Granted, he did run the race at IRP last year, but that's a short track compared to a super speedway. So he is going to run this race to get approval to make sure that he can be okay to run the race. There's two reasons why a lot of people are frustrated about this. Number one, he is a NASCAR Cup Series winner. Yes, it was on a road course slash street course, but he is a winner in NASCAR. So you would think people in NASCAR at least would be okay with him being approved for that. But the other big reason why I think there's a lot of frustration is because of the fact that the ARCA race is on the same day as a NASCAR Xfinity Series, which is why some of these rules don't make sense. And the other reason why a lot of people are also frustrated about him being required to run the ARCA race is because of the fact that you had a driver like Connor Daly, and this is no disrespect to Connor Daly, but Connor Daly, I guess maybe they're using the Indy 500 experience maybe as an excuse, but Connor Daly never had a super speedway start before. Same with Travis, well, Travis Stone, it's been 10 years, so he had a little bit of experience, but still my point stands. is I think that because the only reason SVG is being required to do this is because he's never ran a super speedway type of track. I think it's a bit, that's a massive and huge reason why he's being required to do this. I don't 100% agree with it, but I understand the rules. It's been rules for many, many years. Nonetheless, so I think he's going to be fun to watch, and I think most likely it'll be with the number 2018, the Pinnacle Racing Group organization that drivers like Luke Fenhouse and Carson Quaffle and Connor Zilch have had an opportunity to drive for. That's most likely where he'll go, and I'd probably be the only Arca Starkey mates in 2024. And also hasn't been announced if he's going to run any truck series races. I'd imagine maybe Nice Motorsports may field another truck for 2024 just so SVG can get an opportunity chance to get a little bit of experience. 
considering Nice and Track House have had a partnership before, or maybe Spire gives them an opportunity there. But still, I think it's going to be very interesting and fun to see SBG run the ARCA opener at Daytona. I think he'd be someone who could be really competitive for sure, and I'm glad to see he's getting opportunity and chance to run the ARCA opener. I don't 100% agree with the rules, but again, the rules are the rules, and we have to follow them. And at this point, it is what it is when it comes to those rules. And now we're going to head on to the next story of today's episode as we're talking about AJ Allmendinger. As it was announced earlier today that AJ Allmendinger is going to run the Daytona 500 driving the number 16 car for Colleg Racing. AJ Allmendinger, of course, has ran many Daytona 500s in the past where I know they'll be driving the number 16 car in the Xfinity Series once again in 2024. This confirms one key thing that we had heard in recent weeks, that the number 16 car is going to be a rotation car throughout the 2024 season because they could not find someone to bring in sponsorship and funding. It's still unclear if Ty Dillon's going to be with the team in 2024 in the NASCAR Cup Series currently at the moment. He does have a little bit of sponsorship funding with him, but again, he may have lost that. We're not entirely sure at this point when it comes to that. As for AJ Allmendinger, he's actually a really solid super speed racer and was pretty competitive in the most recent race at Daytona International Speedway. And Call of Racing in general, their super speedway program is really strong and really, really good. Especially in the NASCAR Xfinity Series where they've won many super speedway races in the past. Now, let's talk about the 16 car just a little bit because there's a lot of speculation around the number 16 car. Obviously, A.J. Allmendinger is going to run the Daytona 500. I would imagine that A.J. more than likely will run all the road course races throughout the year and maybe a couple other races like maybe Homestead, maybe Bristol because he's been historically really good at those tracks as well. Some other potential drivers we could see, Shane Van Gisbergen, though it was kind of unclear if he's going to drive a call of racing in his seven NASCAR Cup Series starts or if he's going to drive with track outs racing it could be one way or the other maybe it's a split where we'll see him partly in the 91 car and then maybe of course we'll see him in the 16 car as well maybe we'll see ty dillon drive behind the wheel maybe someone shocking and surprising will get an opportunity and shot to run in this car that we don't know at this point but my and maybe also josh williams let's not forget that josh also has a little bit of sponsorship and funding and i would imagine the call of racing is looking to run josh williams some select cup series races as well with call of racing as for AJ Allmendinger being confirmed for the 16, though, I'm glad to see he'll at least be driving in the Daytona 500 with Call of Racing next year. Because, like I said, I think it's good to see that AJ is going to at least be in the Cup Series on a part time basis. They promised him that. And it's going to be interesting to see who else Call of Racing fills out for the number 16 car throughout the rest of the year. It may be a race by race basis, or they're going to announce at some point what the rest of their driver lineup in that number 16 car is going to look like. But nonetheless, so I'm glad to see the AJ is going to run. Again, he doesn't have to race his way into the Daytona 500. There's another thing to think about, too. Maybe Call of Racing does run a third car in the Daytona 500. They did run one with the number 13 car that he ran, I believe, for Chandler Smith. Well, of course, Chandler Smith did not make the field. Maybe they're going to run a third car for Josh Williams, perhaps, and maybe we'll see more entries in the Daytona 500. Nonetheless, so I'm glad to see that AJ is going to run the Daytona 500 with Colleg Racing in 2024. I think he will be pretty competitive and very fast throughout the 2024 season. Looking forward to seeing back behind the wheel of the Colleg Racing number 16 car. And now we're going to head on to the next story of today's episode as we're talking about silly season, as we're talking about a little bit of a checkpoint as we get close to the end of 2023. And a lot of people have been asking questions about certain drivers in regards to silly season. And there's five drivers we're talking about today. Let's first start off with Matt Benedetto. There have been a lot of questions surrounding Matt Benedetto. According to Bob Pockers, it is still to be determined on what's going to be happening with Matt Benedetto for 2024. We obviously know that Matt Benedetto will not be joining Rackley World Racing once again in 2024. It's unclear what Rackley's doing at this point, but Matty D is still looking for a ride for 2024. And let's be realistic here, the rides are drying up really, really quickly for Matt Benedetto. Look, I believe Matt Benedetto does deserve a ride in NASCAR. 
I would love to see him maybe go to the Xfinity Series. I don't think he's going to get a cup ride with the number 15 team. We'll talk about why here in just a little bit. But I think Matt Benedetto could end up at a team like AM Racing. AM Racing is number 25 is in the ride because AM Racing is looking to expand their Xfinity Series program for 2024. So maybe he goes to AM Racing. There's also some other teams like maybe outside shot of going part-time and maybe RSS Racing perhaps. I think BJ McLeod Motorsports is another team that hasn't announced their plans. And there's also some truck rides that are available for 2024 right now. But Matt Benedetto is still to be determined at this point as he's working on sponsorship. Same thing with Frankie Muniz. It's still to be determined with him. We had thought early in the offseason that Frankie would be going to RSS Racing, but RSS Racing has denied that he's going there, and I don't believe he's going to RSS Racing in 2024. Some had thought maybe go to Thor Sport Racing. That's been denied. I don't think he's going to Thor Sport at this point because they announced Connor Jones at a 66. So really for Frankie, I'm not sure at this point where he's going for 2024. For, I think Frankie should be racing in Xfinity or trucks. I think getting experience there would be really good. He was solid in, our, in his first arc of year. Oh, Frankie can find a ride for 2024. Next, let's talk about Ty Dillon. There was a lot of chalk and chatter throughout most of the offseason that Ty Dillon was going to go full-time in the number 16 cup car for college racing, but that may have fell through. There have been some chatter maybe he's not going to go there. There's also a chance he goes part-time at college racing in the NASCAR Cup Series in 2024, but at this point, I'm really not sure. Look, Ty Dillon, no disrespect to him. He's not that great of a driver. I think he would do a much better job in the NASCAR Xfinity Series at the moment than racing in cup. Maybe going back down to Xfinity, running a third RCR Cart, considering he's a grandson of Richard Chose, maybe he goes there. I don't know at this point, but I really don't know what's going on with Ty Dillon right now. Let's talk about Roger Kroof. Roger's the only one that's kind of a little bit known. It sounded like, according to Bob Pocker, said Roger Kroof may be full-time in the truck series in 2024. There are some truck rides that are still available, but they're drying up really quickly. There have been some speculation early in this offseason that maybe he'd be going to Spire Motorsports next year, but I'm not sure at this point, considering Chase Purdy's going to be full-time with the team, most likely in the 77 truck. Nick Sanchez is going to be full-time with Rev Racing with a partnership from Spire Motorsports. And then, of course, you do have a team maybe like Rackley, Rackley's team has not announced their plans for 2024 at this point. Raja does bring a little bit of sponsorship and funding with him from the Wendell Scott Foundation. So maybe Raja goes there in 2024. So that could be a potential possibility. And then Brett Moffitt is also to be determined. A lot of people thought that Brett Moffitt was going to go back to Front Row Motorsports, considering the fact he won at Talladega earlier this year and got a win with the team. But at this point, Brett Moffitt not going to Front Row. I could see him going back to AM Racing next year. That certainly is a possibility. I think he deserves an opportunity to run in NASCAR with a really good team, but I don't know what's going to happen at this point. So we'll see what happens with all five of the drivers that I mentioned here. We'll see what rides they go to, and we'll see where they end up he heading in the 2024 NASCAR season, we'll, or the silly season. We'll end up seeing what happens in regards to that. And now we're going to go ahead and jump on to the first of three major stories in today's episode as we're talking about Kaz Grala. Now, earlier today, there was a report that came out from LJ Toledo from Seriously Fast Motorsports that, according to him, it sounds like that Kaz Grala could be joining Rick Ware Racing in 2024, driving most likely the number 15 car. Now, from LJ Toledo's tweet, it didn't say specifically the number, but I thought it had been confirmed that Justin Haley most likely would be driving the number 51 car for Rick Ware Racing in 2024. Kaz Grala going to Rick Ware Racing would definitely be a very interesting move. We already knew that Kaz Grala would not be returning to Sam Hunt Racing in 2024, but this would be the first time if Kaz Grala does truly, in fact, end up going to Rick Ware Racing in the 2024 season, this will be the first time that Kaz Grala has been full-time in the NASCAR Cup Series. Now, Kaz Grala is not new to the NASCAR Cup Series. He actually drove the three car for Rich Schultz Racing in 2020 at the Daytona Road Course, where he actually led a lap and finished in the top. 10 there in 8th. He also did of course make some select starts with the money team in 2022 when that team was starting up and I think also made a select start in the Cup Series this year in 2023. Now when I think of Kaz Grawl, Kaz Grawl has had a very interesting career. 
He, of course, was a driver for GMS Racing back in 2017 and ended up winning a race. Could have won a couple races in 2017, but got dumped by Austin Center at that race at Canadian Tire Motorsports Park. Then in 2018, he drove for that number 24 organization that didn't even make it through the whole entire season. And then, of course, been back and forth driving part-time until he got his first full-time opportunity in at least a couple of years to drive the number 26 car for Sam Hunt Racing. He had an up-and-down year in 2023. He got a couple, I think, four or five top fives all together and got quite a few top tens throughout the year. But it was a little bit of a struggle year for Kaz Grawla in 2023. Now, I think, yeah, Kaz is a very talented driver. Kaz, I believe, is 24, 25 years old. So him getting an opportunity to run in the Cup Series at a younger age would be very, very interesting. And if he truly is going to the Rick or Racing organization in 2024, you're seeing RFK and Rick were making big moves and taking it a lot seriously. Again, you have a driver like Justin Haley coming in full-time. And Justin Haley, I think in general, he is going to be someone that impresses over time. I do think there's going to be some struggle for the Ricker Racing Group. But you obviously know that. And the reason you're getting so many drivers interested in driving for these middle-to-back teams is is because there's a lot of potential. You see Rick or Racy making big moves. You had them get drivers. They went from having drivers like Cody Ware in their organization driving in their cup program to having drivers like Ryan Newman, Cole Custer. You had Riley Herbs get an opportunity. Jensen Buttons come over and race with them. And now for the first time, this organization may have two full-time drivers in both of their cars. And this would also confirm that there'd be only 35 entry, full-time entries for this season. Again, this story to follow, apparently according to the, the tweet, and according to the, the report, it sounds like this announcement could be coming in the next few weeks or something along those lines. We're not entirely sure. Rick, where racing tends to make their announcements a little bit later in the off-season. But then again, I think it's really cool and awesome to see that there's a potential possibility of Cavs Grawl like going there. Sponsorship is unknown at this point if he is truly going there, but it'll be very interesting to watch to see what happens. Nonetheless, it sounds like there's a really great chance and a really strong possibility that Kaz Grawla may be headed over to Ricker Racing in 2024. And honestly, I'm here for if it does in fact end up happening. So wait to see what happens in regards to that, but it sounds like there's a chance and possibility that we will be seeing Kaz Grawla potentially headed to Ricker Racing in the 2024 season. And now we're going to go ahead and jump on to the first of two major stories in today's episode as we're talking about Cam Waters. Now, we already know of two drivers who are coming from the Supercars Invasion. You got Shane Van Gisbergen, who signed a development deal with Trackhouse Racing, going to drive seven NASCAR Cup Series races, either with Trackhouse Racing or, of course, with College Racing, and, of course, run full-time with College Racing in the NASCAR Xfinity Series this upcoming season. You've also got Brody Gusecki coming over and driving for four or five races with RCR, most likely in the number 33 car, with Erebus Racing supporting the organization throughout the year. But now you have Cam Waters. According to an article from SpeedCafe.com, Cam Waters will be joining RFK Racing in 2024 in the number 60 car that Stage 60 program for three NASCAR Cup Series races with Monster Energy backing. Apparently, this has been a secret deal that has been going on behind the scenes for a while now, as like I've already mentioned, a supercars invasion that has been going on and taking place. Now, a little bit of a background on Cam Waters. Cam Waters doesn't have the numbers of a driver like Shane Van Gisbergen or Brody Gusecki, but Cam Waters is a very, very solid driver. He finished second in the Supercars Championship in 2022 and finished seventh in this year's championship in 2023. Cam Waters also has 11 career Supercars victories and got a, like I said, a win or two in 2023. Cam Waters potentially coming over and racing with RFK Racing in the number 60 car proves my point. I've already mentioned it, but you're seeing a massive Supercars invasion. This is as big as like the IndyCar invasion and the open wheel invasion happened in 2008. And unlike the open wheel invasion where you had a lot of drivers like Juan Montoya, Dario Franchitti, among others come over like Danica Patrick as well. I think the supercars invasion has a lot more potential to be extremely successful. And here's why I think it has a lot more potential to be more successful. Because the V8 supercars, the Repco supercars are extremely similar to the NASCAR Cup Series cars. That's what NASCAR had in mind. They're one of the, of the types of cars they looked at when they were developing the next gen car was a Repco supercar. And that's why I think these guys are going to be a lot easier to work with. Now, where will Cam Waters drive? in the three race that he runs with RFK Racing, because RFK is a very solid team, and it's another big move that Brad Kozlowski is making as well. 
My best guess is most likely the Chicago Street Course will be one of those races, and I imagine the other two will be road course races, but we could see this potentially run this number 60 car in the Coca-Cola 600. I would imagine that Cam Waters would like to run an oval as well. Now, how do I expect Cam Waters to run? Well, Cam Waters doesn't, like I said, have any oval experience or experience in a next-gen car at this point, but I would imagine that Cam Waters would be extremely solid and very successful in 2024 in the three races that he runs. And I think he will be competing for the win at the Chicago Street Course because we know RFK's road course program has gotten better. Chris Buescher has scored top 10s in quite a few races, and in general, Ford wanted to bring someone in who has a lot of talent. So I expect Cam Waters to be pretty consistent and really, really good. And again, I think this is going to continue. We're going to be seeing guys come in. Again, it's really cool to see that that number 60 stage 60 car is going to run more races, most likely the Daytona 500. And I think in general, Cam Waters is going to bring a lot to the table, bring a lot to light. And in general, I think he's going to be able to really help RFK racing. And I think he's also going to be able to not only help Chris Buescher improve on road courses as well, but I, who really doesn't need as much improvement to begin with, because like I said, Chris Buescher is a really good road course racer. But I think this could help out a driver like Chris Buescher, but also Brad Keselowski. Brad Keselowski used to be an amazing road course racer back in the day, back in the early 2000s, and really up until the late 2010s. But unfortunately, over the last few years, Brad Keselowski has kind of fallen for grace on road courses and hasn't been as strong. And I know Brad's been trying to improve on road courses, but again, the next-gen car, everyone's so close together. Everyone has gotten good on road courses, and the emphasis of road courses have become a big thing in the NASCAR Cup Series over recent years. I can't wait for the day, though, that all three of the drivers, that being Shane Van Gisbergen, Brody Gusecki, and Cam Waters, are all battling for the victories. I think all four drivers have a really great chance and a really great opportunity to go for the overall win and for the overall victory. Nonetheless, I'm extremely excited about this, and I'm glad to see that it sounds like that Cam Waters will, in fact, be joining RFK Racing in 2024. Again, a formal announcement has not been made at this point from RFK Racing, but I would imagine in the not-so-distant future, an announcement is going to be coming for this team and Cam Waters be driving for RFK Racing in the 2024 season. And now we're going to go ahead and jump on to the final major story of today's episode as we're talking about Sheldon Creed. Now, last weekend on Friday, Sheldon Creed was on Sirius M NASCAR Radio. He, of course, talked about joining Joe Gibbs Racing in the 2024 season, driving the number 18 car. But Sheldon Creed also talked about his tenure at Rich Schultz Racing and also called out Richard Childress and Richard Childress Racing themselves. He says the equipment that he was driving for was holding him back and was getting extremely frustrated over the last few years, not being able to score victories. Now, I do want to talk about this for a little bit because obviously Sheldon Creed, we all know that what happened between him and Rich Schultz Racing did not end amicably. We all remember what happened at Martinsville earlier in the year, the last second of the last race. We all saw the situation with Richard Childress. Now, Richard basically called Sheldon Creed the dumbest driver he's ever driven for him. You also did, of course, have Andy Petrie who confronted Sheldon. Now, Andrew did publicly apologize on Race Hub, and they actually publicly apologized together. And then, of course, he had Austin Hill calling out basically spilling the beans that Sheldon was going to be going over to Richard Childress Racing. So how that situation kind of ended, I don't blame Sheldon one bit at all for calling out Rich Schultz Racing. Here is my big problem and big issue with Sheldon Creek calling out Richard Childress here, at least in this situation. I don't think the equipment was holding Sheldon Creed back. Look, I would not be surprised if Austin Hill was getting preferable privilege and was getting preferred vehicles than Sheldon Creed. But Sheldon, it's not like you never had a chance to win races, my guy. You were up front on a pretty consistent basis, especially throughout 2023. You, yes, you definitely got taken out at times, but you could have won multiple races throughout the 2023 season. You could have won the second to last race at Marsville. You almost did win the race at Phoenix. You finished second there. You almost won at Daytona. You could have won at Darlington last year in 2022 in the race you're battling Noah Grayson and Kyle Larson at. You could have won a bunch of road course races this year. You finished runner-up, I believe, at Watkins Glen when Sam Mayer won. So the equipment was not holding him back. Look, I think Sheldon Creed is a very, very talented driver, but let's be for real, Austin Hill is a better driver than Sheldon Creed currently at the moment, and Sheldon Creed, in my opinion, was not getting held back by the equipment in any stretch of the imagination. 
Now, Charlotte did also mention he had an opportunity to potentially go to a team like Stuart Haas Racing, maybe go there. But then he, of course, chose Joe Gibbs Racing, which Joe Gibbs Racing is going to give him the best opportunities and chances. Look, Sheldon Creed is going to have to perform really, really good because people are not going to accept the excuses. Again, I understand calling out Richard because of the way that he handled the situation with you in Martinsville. I don't blame him one bit at all for doing that because, in my opinion, he ab Richard absolutely deserves the berating that he got from Sheldon there. But in my personal and honest opinion, the equipment did not hold Sheldon Creed back. I don't personally think... It did. I think Sheldon Creed was not held back by the equipment. He was able to be extremely competitive. He is going to have some really high expectations in 2024. He's going to expect it to be a championship threat and contender. And luckily for him, he's going to be working with Sam McCauley next year. Sam McCauley is a pretty good crew chief. Worked with Denny Hamlin when, of course, Chris Gabehart was spending for multiple races. He, of course, won the Coke 600 2022. So I think that this pairing will gel pretty well together. And I think Sheldon will get a few wins. But if Sheldon doesn't really perform, and he does, in fact, end up struggling, he can't be able to blame the equipment. Joe Gibbs Racing Equipment is some of the best equipment in the field. In fact, I think it is the best team in the Xfinity Series. This is one of the stronger lineups going into 2024, and I think, in general, he's going to have some really big shoes to fill taking over that 18 car and going to the team where John Hunter Nemechek won a lot of races, which he's coming back to that team next year. And, of course, you have Eric Roll coming back into the team. And you've got Chandler Smith coming in, who I think will probably perform better than Sheldon Creed. I think expectations for Sheldon Creed is they at least win three or four races or at least get a couple victories and potentially make it to the championship four because I think that he had a chance to make the final four with the RCR. So I think Sheldon Creed in general has every right to be frustrated with the way things were handled. But again, again, I personally don't believe the equipment held him back. He's going to be expected to have some really high performance in the 2024 season. I think he'll be able to live up to it for sure. I think he'll have his best year in Xfinity Series career, get a couple wins. And I think he at least for sure does make the round of eight for sure. But I think he does have, but he's going to have, be someone who I think can't blame his equipment. If he struggles in 2024, he cannot blame the equipment, in my opinion. The excuses are not going to hold up, and they're going to get dry, and people are going to get frustrated at him really, really quickly. We'll see how he ends up doing, though. But nonetheless, I understand the frustration in certain instances. But in my opinion, the equipment did not hold back Sheldon Creed, in my honest opinion. So that is good for today's NASCAR news and motorsports news video. I want to thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe to the channel. Notifications on so if I win a video, it does go live on my channel. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Ask for on Patreon as well. Link the description below that and comment your thoughts below on today's episode. Do you think the equipment helps Sheldon Cree back or not? Let me your thoughts in the comments below. And what are your thoughts about all the other stories we've talked about today on the channel? Let me your thoughts in the comments below. More than likely, tomorrow on the channel, there's going to be a Silly Season update talking about all the Silly Season news over the course of the last few weeks we've not talked about. And then, of course, on Saturday, there'll likely be a winter predictions unless there's enough NASCAR news to cover on the channel over the next few days. And then Saturday and Sunday, there will not be videos on the channel, as, of course, it will be Christmas and Christmas Eve. But the day after, you'll be seeing the NASCAR Truck Series predictions for 2024. Got a lot of great content dropping the channel as we close out 2023. So anyways, like I said, I want to thank you guys for watching today's episode. And I'll see you guys next time for more great awesome NASCAR content and other motorsports content on the channel like this. Take care, everybody.